So we were talking about, you know, as we get started in this, this is the conclusion of our Tune In series. And uh, we're gonna be looking at one more passage from the book of Psalms. Um, there's 150 chapters and we've been spending the last few weeks just picking out specific ones and talking through specific topics. And today we're gonna be taking, which is probably a, a, a well-known one to some, maybe not so many of the others of the 150, um, but it's one some may have learned, but it's not a, just a good one because it only has five verses. So you can get your daily reading in. Yes. Some of you say amen to that. Yep. But it's an awesome one. And it, it, because what it does, it, it, it shows us who God is in a great and profound way. But yes, I think you want to. Before we do that, okay. before we do that, All right. I got to lighten the load a little bit. Yeah, okay. Is... So I have a, a funny, if you will, a little story. So uh, let's, just, let's just take it in, shall we? So I was, we were talking about this, and I was thinking about this little girl who was home alone and she was sick. She called her mama at work and she was like, mama, I need you. I need you really bad. I need you to come home. So the mama got off work early and she frantically rushed down to the corner of the drugstore to bring home some medicine. But she noticed when she was driving that it began to rain. So she thought, okay, I'll just run in really quick and really quick out. You know how we do. We're like, well, can, we can beat it and be there. So she's like, I ran in and run out real quick and get the medicine. So when she came back to her car, she noticed something quite different. You guessed it. She locked her keys in her car. So she ran inside to get help from the employees. No one seemed to know what to do. So they just gave her a clothes hanger and said, good luck to you. She ran back to her car as fast as she can and frantically trying to get the door open. The harder she pulled, the harder it was, the more rain started pouring and pouring. And suddenly it was like a downpour. And it came down to the moment where she just was like, uh, out of desperation, Lord, I need your help now. Suddenly, this old pickup truck pulls up right next to her. She looked at him and she saw this man approaching her. He was dirty. He was, his clothes were torn and worn and stained. And his, he had scars and tattooed all over his body. Not one that you'd really want to come across when you were alone. Um, without thinking, she embraced this man. And she said, sir, can you possibly help me? My daughter is sick. I got to get this medicine to her and my, lock, my keys in my car. So within a minute or two, he, you know, he figured it out and successfully unlocked her car. Out of joy, she grabbed the man and she hugged him and said, you're such a nice man. And he pushed her away and said, no, ma'am, I'm not. You see, I have just escaped from prison from stealing cars for a living. So without any hesitation, this woman looked up to heaven and goes, thanks God for sending a professional. <laughs> hey, you gotta thank him where you can, right? <laughs> We want to look at and shoot it. <laughs> I got to get serious. I'll we be here all week. We should have prayed after that. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, we want to tune in to what it looks like when we give him thanks. And something that we may say, but we want to look at the posture that we should have for who God is and who we are to him. And so I want us to, this, this Psalms 100, I wonder if we could read this together, these five verses uh, all out loud, should be on the screen, ready, go. Shout, Shout with joy, joy to the Lord, Lord all the earth. Worship, worship the Lord with gladness. gladness. Come before him, singing with joy. Acknowledge, Acknowledge that the Lord is God. God. He, he made us, us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. I love that. It's a good text. And you know what's funny? On the, during the 21 days of prayer, um, I came home with this. this I was, had been meditating and reading some scripture and something just popped out at me and it was just like, man, I was so pumped. I wanted to do that thing where you come home and say, hey, have you ever seen this before? Like, and she'd be like, no. And I'd be like, look at what I'm, yeah, it wasn't the case. So I walk in the door, I say, hey, baby, when we begin to talk, I said, have you ever seen how the word thanks and prayer begin to correlate in scripture? And like, there's always a, a, a they're interconnected in some way. And she's like, yeah, I just did a deep study on that. I'm like, well, great. <laughs> so I'm gonna do my own deep study into this. And so we begin to talk through what we were seeing and what, I begin to unravel is this. It was that the word thanks or thanksgiving or being thankful is, is much more than just something we say. It's a posture of our hearts and our minds before Jesus the King. And I, and I begin to unpack, and one of the, the more I dug, the more I begin to see it's something that 
needs to be defined because it, it, it helps expand verses like 1 Timothy where it says, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people and ask God to help them and give thanks. It says, Colossians 4, 2 says, devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. 1 Thessalonians says, never stop praying, be thankful in all circumstances. Philippians 4 and 6 says, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Even Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 15 says that the disciples came and people were hungry and there was 5,000 there, so we don't have nothing to feed them. So what do you have? He says, we got, we got two fishes and five loaves. It says that Jesus took those items. He it says he prayed over them, he blessed them and gave thanks. And then multiplication happened. Right, right. And something happened in that moment when thanksgiving and prayer were done together. And I, and I want you to hear us today and to set the tone for where we're going. I want you to see this, that thankfulness gives us the perspective to see through things and the perseverance to see things through. I wanna say that one more time for somebody. That thankfulness is going to give you today the perspective to see through whatever mess you walked in here today facing and give you the perseverance to say, with God, I'm gonna make it through. I'm gonna make it through. Amen. You see, when we tune into the posture of thanksgiving, it positions us to see him and to recognize him as Lord. And it allows us to see him as our God and not us as God. Right. Now, I know we know he's God and somebody's like, I know that. Yeah, but how many know, this is my challenge, just maybe, that I'm good with saying, hey, you're God, but I'm also in charge here too. Yeah. I become the lowercase g God of my life. Yeah. See, thankfulness says, no, 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 you're God. I'm not. And the freedom and the power that's found when we do that is, is, is unmatchable. Yeah. And I think we've seen this in our life in so many ways when um, the more we were talking about uh, this, this, this message today that we, we begin to go back and, and we've done this throughout the years that we look at and we just have always been thankful because our lives don't make sense. <laughs> no, they don't. Like if you would have planned it out, um, I wouldn't have done it this way. <laughs> Every step of the way, yeah. it has not made sense. We've went through some very blessed seasons and then we went through some challenging seasons yeah. and yep. some seasons made by dumb mistakes and I've done some dumb things in my life. Um, yes, you have. But even... <laughs> I am not one of them. No, that's the best one. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> but I've made poor choices. I know I'm not the only one. Yeah, you're right. I've made... Decision, but there's one thing that we've done. We've always said thank you. Right. Even uh, today, uh, this weekend, actually, yeah. uh, seven years ago yeah. in 2017, we were obedient to God because we knew that God said that He wanted us to move here, to come to this city, and to be a part of of being salt and light to this city. And so we 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 didn't know what it would be, and, and maybe I I didn't think all the things through. I don't know. Probably it's not. Fine. But I yeah, left yeah. a full time job. And I left here with, with, with my family and the, yep. the, the four of us, and we put all of our belongings that would fit in the U-Haul, we sold everything else. Everything. And we moved here out of obedience to God. Mm -hmm. I had an on-call on part-time job. Yeah. How many know what that means? Yeah. They call you when they need you. Yes, and that's all. Every other weekend right. type of situation. Right. I don't know if, if I, again, I don't know if me and God were, maybe I got my wires crossed, but anyways, <laughs> I was being obedient to it. They were being obedient. But we, in that journey, we have seen God's faithfulness. Yep, totally. Every step of the way. Yep. And I was, we were given this, 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 this word from one of our overseers in our life, and he told us this, and we, we wrote it down. Let me tell you this. There are words you're gonna get in your life from God, and, and God's gonna speak maybe to you from people. Don't lose those words. That's right, hold on to those. And those, this word was, don't lose the awe. Don't lose the awe. Don't lose the awe. Because every miracle began with a problem. Yep. 
Yep. And that's one of the things we've done. So we totally remained faithful in those things. We were being obedient. And, and obedience is always better than sacrifice. And we gave everything up to move here and to be obedient to God. And it was so crazy because it, we had so many setbacks. We had different things that happened. You know, you were working three jobs to make it happen at one point to make ends meet. It was insane. There, the doctors were telling me that there was no more possibility of having another child. It's not gonna happen. It's just get a dog because you're not gonna be able to have a baby like it was that crazy and then we um they said you know we we're trying to look for a house back in 2011 ish yeah and that didn't work out and that's okay because god we didn't know the big picture until later we had come from a place where there was no job for a while like we were to the point where um they <laughs> we were about to be evicted like yep. it was to that point where there was no income coming in and then let me just tell you in in, in just a matter of a few years because of our faithfulness, because of our thanksgivings and being thankful for the things that we had, God gave us, oh, so much more than we could ever dream, think, or imagine. But just looking back, it's just absolutely wild because let me show you, let, tell them what God did. Well, so in, in 2020, this is, with us, he's like every one of you, is, it, 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 a lot of things shut yeah. down. Yep. A lot of things happen. And the, I look at things shut down, but when everything around you in the natural shuts down, God can open up things in That's the supernatural. Right. He sure does. Mm -hmm. And I just share this today to encourage some of you that are in a season where you don't know. We gave thanks when there was nothing, and all of a sudden in 2020, in March 15th of 2020, mm -hmm. I was promoting, given a job, which made me where I got one job instead of three. How many know that's a lot better place Amen. to be in? Amen to that. And we were able to then uh, set the pace for there to where we purchased our first home. And now God's got a funny sense of humor yeah, it's, because we bought a funny. three bedroom, you know, there was two kids in, in us. And then in July, we took a picture in front of that home and that's a sonogram with uh, Gideon. He's now three. Yeah. That, so now we had to figure out what we're gonna do there. God, yeah, again, yeah. got funny, it was funny timing. Yeah. But we give thanks for yes, the house he do. gave us. But oh, yeah. I wanna share that with some of you that God was able to do something yes, he did. in the midst of everything because we gave thanks even when, we, when everything was pulled away, stripped yeah. away, we said, we're gonna give thanks for what we have. Yeah. And it allows us yep. to see that, because I want somebody to hear that today because here's where I find myself, that I don't have to be anxious or worry. I can find peace, as Philippians said, because he's working on my behalf. Right. He's always been working on my behalf. In fact, he's gone into my future, into some of your future, and he's already been working to make a way for you where there seems to be no way. That's the thought and the perspective that we gotta capture today. And so with that in mind, I wanna, we're gonna look at our text and there's three things that I want us to see that are gonna help cultivate a posture of thanks. And the first one is this, acknowledge God as the giver of all good things in our lives. Yeah. We gotta acknowledge yes, him. It yes, said yes. In, in verses one through three, it says, shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing joy. Uh, acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us yep. and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Yep. I can be thankful. I can give him thanks because he made us. And, and now, how many know this? This is what, it's, it's kind of hard for some of us because we think, well, he made us. Well. Look at this. I wouldn't be proud of this mess. Well, let me tell you this. It goes back to some of you remember wood shop in, in, in high school. <laughs> there were some things I made that I am not really proud of. Okay, I'll just be honest. Um, I am not handy by any stretch. And I remember my, I was like, we say we gotta make something for, for somebody. I was like, okay, I'm gonna make a bread box for my mom because they show the cool pictures of what you can make. And so I began. It didn't look great in the wood shop area, much less when I took it home and set it on the counter. I was like, oh, mom, we gotta get rid of that. No, my son made that. You gotta keep this right here. I'm like, mom, no, God, burn it, burn it, burn it. You can't put in a varnish on that. That was bad. But see, God looks at you and I, and he says, I made that. Yeah, he does. I made that. I'm proud of yeah. that. Yep. He doesn't look at us and say, well, that's, that's, that I, I'm gonna let that go. Like, I, I messed up on that one. Oopsie, let's move on to the next one. No, God looks at you and says, I made that. That's he right. says, we are his people. We are his people. He made us and we are his. It says, the sheep of his pasture. Imagine this. 
The shepherd of our lives is the one that's protecting us, leading us, guiding us, watching over this. Some of you may be on the journey just saying, I don't see where God is taking me. Can I tell you this? If the shepherd is leading you, he's never taking you into a place right. that will harm you. That's right. He won't. Yep. Even if you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you don't have to fear evil because his rod and staff are going to comfort and protect you. He's going to take you into pastures that you're going to be able to yeah. find rest yeah. and comfort where you need it the most. Exactly. That's why we can give him thanks, because we are his. I mean, James said it this way in 117, every good gift, every good gift. and every perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. God is not changing his mind. Yeah. So why should we worry? Some of us think that God is, is gonna forget about it, that our future is like, I'm, I'm gonna mess this up. I'm not gonna get it right. And God's gonna change his mind. Can I tell you this? God doesn't change his mind on how much he loves us. That's right. That's right. He's not gonna change his mind about you. Nope. No matter your mistakes. There's, there's one more thing. I don't know, I'm rambling. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but there's this part where we get these worry thoughts in our minds, yeah, and I've had do. these before. Yes, we do. And we get these thoughts that I, I, I can't, I'm not going to be able to, it's not going to work out. And, and we forget that God is in control of all the good things happening. Mm -hmm. And so we lean into our own understanding, our own words. Can I tell you this? There was a scientific study done that, that, that speaks to the fact that, that gratitude and thanksgiving cannot coexist with anxiety and worry. The parts of your brain that are, 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 are that focus and in, are, in when it comes to worry thoughts and, and, and anxiety, those things when they're happening, Thanksgiving and gratitude can, can take place. That's but when Thanksgiving and gratitude are the focal point of your mind and you're aligning yourself with that, anxiety and worry cannot coexist at the same time. That's awesome. So think about this. Whatever you set your mind to, you give him thanks. You yep. position him as the God and creator of your life and position you as the one that he's looking to make a way for. Right. Oh, that's good. He's got your back. That's good. And that, that being said, it's, I think the biggest mistake that we make is not how we give thanks, but it's actually we fail to live with thankfulness. Yeah. Because thankfulness, is, it should be an automatic response. You know, when you teach your kids or when you were little, your mama taught you when you got something, you say, thank you. I did that this morning and Gideon, uh, Michelle gave Gideon a cracker and I said, ah, say thank you, thank you. It's an automatic response. It's an automatic response. But what I notice sometimes is that when we only give thanks quickly, when it's something big that happens in our lives, like the house or the baby or, or a new job or the car, whatever we give thanks, oh, thank you, Jesus. But what about the small things? What about the little things? Like when you woke up this morning, period, you know, what the, the breath in your lungs, the food on your table might not be your favorite food, but you got something to eat. You know what I mean? There's, there's things that we forget to get, give God all the credit and all of the glory and all of the thanks for, because we're just used to it. We're just used to it. But I just wonder if we gave him thanks for those things, when he sees that we see the big things where he's more like, oh, you're just showing off. Right? He goes above and beyond what we can think, dream, or imagine. So if we see the little things and we go, oh, that's how you work. Oh, I see you. Oh, I see you doing that. Oh, I see that. Oh, you see, you had my back. And then when he does the big thing, he's like, oh, you're just showing off, Papa God. Like, you're amazing. See, giving him thanks puts us back into alignment where he is above all, through all, and in all. Romans 1 says this. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. They began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious, ever-living God, they worshiped idols. So you'll see me, and this is a good action item for you, is when you pray, start off with saying thank you. Start with that first, a posture of thankfulness. I teach our kids that same thing. Is we teach them that is, hey, be thankful first when you come into the presence of God. Thank him before you ask for anything. Because here's a few things that's gonna happen. One, it's gonna re remind you that you're living in an answered prayer. Yeah. You're living in prayers that you prayed a long time ago. 
But see, God always answers our needs. He will always fulfill our needs. That's what he says, according to his riches, according to his glory. But see, when we give him glory, we are giving him thanks. That's what we do, right? He needs, he deserves all the glory, all the praise, all the thanks. So we give him that. It's doing two things. We're giving him praise. We're giving him thanks. But then it's reminding us of where we've come from. It's saying, thank you, God, for what you did. Because here's how that works in your brain, that anxiety, that fear, what he's talking about is that we go, okay, if I thank him first for all these things, it's actually going to be taking away my fear when I ask for the things I'm going through now. So you say, thank you, Jesus, for what you did back then. Thank you, God, for healing me. Thank you, God, for the little things. Thank you, God, for this. Thank you, God, for that. And you go, and Lord, I know you're gonna heal me. I know you're gonna restore my relationships. I know that you're gonna do it. Why? Because look what you did before. That sure enough takes away that anxiety and that fear because you come from a posture. And I know our Heavenly Father, he's going, oh, see, you saw me in that. You saw me in that. Here's more. Because you see that I am God and you're not. So he's able to position that. And when we don't do that, what happens is is we believe the lies. See, we distance ourselves and we're not thankful. We start to distance ourselves from God and all of a sudden we become God and we say, we manifested that into the universe. Hate to break it to you, but God is the universe. So you ain't doing nothing. He's doing that for you on your behalf. But I'm gonna tell you right now, when we do that, we start becoming dark and we start becoming confused and we start believing the lies of the enemy when he's over here like, if you just thank me, I promise it's gonna draw you closer to me. It's gonna draw you closer to me. It's gonna draw you closer to me. And then I'm gonna be able to pour out my blessings more on you because you're seeing that you are not doing it, that I'm taking care of it and I'm just blessing you because you're my baby. You're my child. So keep going, keep blessing, keep doing it, keep Tell him thank you for everything because he will supply your needs. You just got to be thankful along the way and see it. Wow. Well. <laughs> so we got to acknowledge God as the giver yes, of all the good do. things in we our sure life. Yes, we sure do. The second thing, recognize the good things in our life. Yes. Got to recognize those things. That there are some blessings in your life. Verse four of Psalms 100 says this. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. And here's the thing that the psalmist, I love this message and I, we spoke about this and I'll continue to speak of it. This is not just something that, that is just good in recovery. There but by the grace of God go I. Right. If it wasn't for the grace of God, I shouldn't be standing here with, with my amazing wife. I shouldn't be living the life with my three kids. I shouldn't have anything. Keep going. I shouldn't. I should have nothing. <laughs> See, my, we are all born as sinners right. in need of salvation. We need a savior. And so what happens is, well, I can get it Sorry, off. Sorry, just get that off there. Is there that we go, it? yep. There you go. We need a savior because the sin in our life keeps us in a posture of brokenness and despair. Yeah. And it's the grace of God that is needed to come in because the sin of the stain of sin leaves a mark that you and I can't remove. Yeah. This is why the, the blood of Jesus is so powerful because it says before the foundations of the world, God sent his son to the world to, to die on a cross so that you and I could have life. And it's the blood of Jesus that allows us to, to, to be able to declare that my story may be filled with broken pieces and right. terrible choices and very ugly truths, but it also is filled with a major comeback, with peace in my soul and a grace that saved my life. Amen. And we can declare that in that posture of thankfulness. Amen, amen, amen. And when we understand that, we can embrace the blood of Jesus and we can take what's going on in our life and we can have our sins Wiped away. Hey, babe. Uh, what? what That's happened? a sharpie. Okay. I gave you that a sharpie. That makes the prop go bad. <laughs> if if you, I'll fix it. Okay. Fix, you just keep going. Keep talking. You're doing such a great I job. I promise we know how we're doing. We're things. okay. I'll just ride over it. It's okay. okay. I'm sorry about that. So she's gonna try to fix it. I'll fix it. So now let's play off of that. <laughs> how many of us try to fix our own mistakes? Yeah. <laughs> we try to fix our errors. Right? We try to say, you know what? I, I'm gonna, I can't be good. At, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try to, it's what I give away. I'm gonna try to be a blessing. Of the, I'm gonna try philanthropy. 
I'm gonna try to earn the goodness of God by the good I do. I'll try to obey the commandments. I won't kill somebody today, so I'll try to be good on Thank that God one. For that. You know, I'll do unto others. I won't. I won't cut anybody off as they were leaving today. I'll do unto them because as I'd the want them to do unto me. the parking lot team. That's gonna be. There we great. go. There we go. And so we try to earn God's grace, but the challenge comes in this: is that we are finding ourselves constantly in a position to where the stain of sin, no matter what we do, leaves a mark that we can't take care of, but by the blood of Jesus. And when it's the blood, when we understand that all good things, that I have good things in my life because of what he's done, we can look at, thank you, yeah, what's happened it. here, and because it. of what's covered us, come on. See, what we think is a permanent mark right. can be removed when something greater than ourselves right. comes along That's and right. says, no, 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 right. it's nothing permanent. There's some good things in your life if you just look to me, look to the one that's above. That's right. We can see that there are good things taking place, that his creation is blessed and wonderful. <laughs> So it's, yes. And we're a part of that creation. Absolutely. That actually totally reminds me of one of my favorite scriptures. I actually have it tattooed on my arm. It's Psalms 139, and it says, You made all the delicate inner parts of my body, and you knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship yeah. is marvelous. How well I know it. See, I say this all the time, but when you know who you are and know whose you are, you are a force that hell will be scared of. The enemy hates it when you know who you are in Christ. So it's amazing that your DNA, that's what it's talking about, the DNA of you so intricately, so wound, so complex. And he, when he made you in your mother's womb, he just thought, oh yeah, that's for you, that's for you. He made us all so differently and so complex, but it goes even greater than that. It goes, when you connect yourself to the body of Christ, how complex and marvelous you are there too. Because you are supposed to be a part of the body of Christ. You make up something and you, only you can do, there is something that only you can do that no one else can reach, only certain people that certain people can't reach because the way he made you and designed you, your purpose, you were on purpose for purpose. And we have to remember who that is. We have to remember that not only our DNA is so complex and intricate, but how we are designed for the body of Christ is so important that no one else can do your purpose, that you are so vital to the kingdom. And most importantly, you are wanted by yeah. him. Speaking of wanted, hey ladies, we have our women's event coming up in November called Wanted. You're gonna want to be there. Trust me, Lori Wilhite is gonna be with us. It's gonna be an amazing time. Sign up right now, get your QR codes. It's an early bird special, so you're gonna wanna get that right now, let me just tell you. Tag. Tag, uh-huh, <laughs> shameless plug there. Um, but here's what's crazy. When you know who you are in Christ, when you know how intricately made and, and how, you, when you know that in your mind and in your heart, you kind of stand a little different. Your shoulders are back, your head is held a little high and you can do something about something now. When you walk in your purpose and your calling, you realize that you can see the good things that he's made. When you recognize that you are a good thing, that changes your whole world. Because in the scripture, when God created the whole world, he said everything was good at the end of every day. It was good, it was good, it was good. When he created man, he said it is very good. You are good, you were designed with good. God designed you that way. But here's the crazy part. This is where it twists in our minds, is when you see yourself in the posture that God sees you. When you see yourself, hey, he made me like that. He made me be able to have this gift, this talent, this ability, this thing, this how I am, how I'm, my, my brown hair or my blue eyes, or he made me that way because he thought I was good. When you see yourself in that point of view, it is a lot harder to look at other people without seeing them through the lens of God. Because when you know who you are and how complex you are, you look at the person sitting to your left, sitting to your right on the street, and you think, oh, they're like me. God made them too. That's God's kid. 
They're wonderfully made, wonderfully complex, just like me. Your posture changes, your attitude changes, who you become and how you talk to people changes because you recognize, oh, how he treats me is how he treats them. And I know that I am complex. So you see them as good things. You see your Jesus friends as good things. The ones that are holding your arms up, you know the ones you're gonna get in a life group with, those ones. And then you'll be able to look ahead to better days in your life. See, we're gonna say a passage of scripture. And every time I say it, I want you to say, thank you, Jesus. And every sentence you're gonna say, thank you, Jesus. Here's why. A lot of us have a hard time with compliments, with kind words spoken over us. But when you see yourself in these scriptures and you say, that's how God sees me, it changes you because he loves you so much and he wants the best for you. So we're gonna, I'm gonna say this scripture and at the end of every one, I want you to say, thank you, Jesus. I want you, to, if you want to close your eyes, you can, but I want you to take in those words because this is how he views you, his child. Ready? You saw me before I was born. Thank you, Jesus. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Thank you, Jesus. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Thank you, Jesus. How precious are your thoughts about me, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. They cannot be numbered. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody here today, you may think, I don't know how anything good can come out of my life. Somebody in this room, there's a lie that has been born inside of you because you've worked to be the lowercase to God of your life, trying to make all things work and say, I've messed this up beyond repair. There's no way that, that this can be on anything that it was. It's, it's, you've, you've kind of settled into this posture and said, I don't deserve anything more than this. There's a contentment that has been built upon a lie that you're not worth anything more. There's people in this room that some of you, you've, you gave your life to Jesus maybe years back, some time back, and you walked away from that, that path. And now you find yourself back here and you say, well, I had my one chance and, and this, is, this is, I'll just settle with this. I, I had my chance and I know I screwed it all up and it's okay. I just know if I have God, I'll, I'll, I'm just gonna shoot for heaven. Can I tell you this? That's a lie from the enemy. See, God knew how bad you would mess things up. He knew that, that we would put ourselves in a posture where we could not make it right. But he sent us a gift that cannot return void and can't be voided out. Ephesians says this, that even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Before, when he knew that you would make all those mistakes and, and would screw it up beyond repair, he says he decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. So when we invite him into our hearts and our lives, we open the door to an impossible future. Yeah, you heard me right. An impossible future, a future that's only possible with Jesus, with the good that's shepherd right. leading that's you right. and guiding you. Yep. So don't limit God, because God sees the rest of your story. God sees the rest of your life, and he's already gone in ahead. That's why when David wrote this Psalm of Thanksgiving, this was a man that had experienced a lot of stuff. He had messed up a lot. If you don't believe me, go back and read Samuel and Kings. I mean, this man, he did some stuff. But he, through the course, it says that he knew who God was. He was a man after God's own heart because he knew who he was in God. And he was a man who saw God make ways, rivers in the desert where there were no ways. And why he declared, verse five, that I hope is a declaration you can walk out of here declaring over your life today, the Lord is good. Yes. His unfailing love continues forever. Yes. There is no end. Yes. And his faithfulness continues to each generation. So the change you're making in your life doesn't end with you. 
You're breaking off generational ties and curses so that it impacts your children and your children's children. And so together we can declare with thankful hearts, you, God, are good. Amen. You're good. Amen. You are good. Amen. Could you bow with us in prayer in this moment right here? So we're going to start this prayer off with a prayer of thankfulness. So you can pray your own prayer, pray along with me, but we're gonna pray this together. Say, thank you, Jesus, for today. Thank you for the reminder of how you see us. Thank you for being the giver of all good things. Thank you for helping us recognize that even in the hard times, the hurts, the hangups, there are still good things. Thank you that as we look ahead, we can see good things that you have for us. Thank you that your faithfulness and your unfailing love that continues forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Somebody today, whether you're watching online or you're here in this place today, you say, I, I don't know if I have that life where I can give thanks. So I can tell you, there's nothing complex about it. It's just a matter of receiving Jesus as your Savior. You don't have to do anything outlandish. You just got to invite him into your life. And I promise you, you let God be the Lord of your life. It puts you in a position where you can start from this day forward saying, thank you for everything that you have for me and will do for me. So if I'm speaking to you today and you've never put Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life, I want to pray with you as you take this step. You don't need to do anything. You need to get out of your chair. But with every head still bowed, if that's you, I just want you to lift your hands so I know who I'm praying with today on the count of three. One, two, three. Lift those hands. If that's you saying, I just want a life that gives thanks to him. Thank you. Those of you lifting your hands online, thank you. Thank you so much. Jesus sees your hands today. I want us to pray this prayer together. New Life family, can we speak this out together with our brothers and sisters and say, Jesus, Jesus thank you, thank you for, making for making a way for a sinner like me. I was lost. I was, lost. I was, broken. I was broken. But you came, you came and died, and died. So, that so that I could live. Thank you thank for the new life, the, new the eternal life the eternal that is available, that is available in you. I give you my heart you today. My heart today. In, your In your strong name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give him thanks. Woo!